To understand the rise of the Islamic State, we have to go back in time to before the group even existed. In 1979, during the middle of the Cold War between West and East, Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan to defend a communist dictator from rebels, similar to what Russia and Putin did with Syria and Assad in the Syrian Civil War. Many young people from the Middle East traveled to Afghanistan to join the rebels. They see this as a religious struggle and call themselves Mujahideen. Many of them developed extreme views, among them was a well-educated man who called himself Osama bin Laden. Another man who is good to know about is Abu Musab al zarqawi Bin Laden and Zarqawi never get along well, but will in time create two of the most dangerous terrorist organizations in the world, Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. Ten years later, in 1989, Soviet withdrew from Afghanistan and many fighters go home. Zarqawi goes to Jordan and Bin Laden to Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, Bin Laden grows Al-Qaeda to a global network to continue his struggle against Islam's enemies. Zarqawi also starts a group which later was disbanded. In time, they both returned to Afghanistan which now was under the control of the Taliban. In September 11, Al-Qaeda attacks America. About 3,000 people dies as the world on live news can see how the Twin Towers collapse and as a response, the US invades Afghanistan and Bin Laden flees to Pakistan. Zarqawi also flees, but to Iraq's lawless corner, where he will spend the coming years. Two years later, US also invades Iraq, an act that will change the future of the Middle East forever. The Americans toppled Saddam Hussein's secular Sunni dictatorship and disbanded the Iraqi army. Thousands of Sunni Iraqi soldiers, angry and unemployed, joins the insurgency. Jihadist groups, that is also Sunni, sees this as a repetition of what happened in Afghanistan and flooded into Iraq to fight. Zarqawi is among them. His group eventually becomes Iraq's most ruthless. He especially attacks Shia, which are Iraq's majority, and a civil war starts between Sunni and Shia. Al-Qaeda, isolated and weakened, attempts to bolster its image by forming an alliance with Sarqawi's group, which becomes known as Al-Qaeda in Iraq. But in 2006, Iraq's Sunni rise up against Sarqawi, and the US kills him in an airstrike. Over the next few years, Al-Qaeda in Iraq is largely defeated. The Americans withdrew in 2011 from Iraq, who finally looks stable. In 2011, the Arab Spring spreads across the Middle East. In Syria, dictator Bashar al-Assad cracks down violently on protesters, who eventually fires back, leading to a civil war. Assad fears that the world will intervene against him, so he releases jihadists from prisons and making it harder for foreign powers to back them. Back in Iraq, what remains of Zarqawi's group is still allied with Al-Qaeda, but now known as the Islamic State of Iraq. It's led by a bookish religious scholar who calls himself Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. In early 2012, Baghdadi sends a top deputy to Syria to start a new Al-Qaeda branch to fight alongside the rebels, Jabhat al-Nusra. Baghdadi also took a series of prisons in Iraq and freed former jihadists in order to recruit his own. In April 2013, Baghdadi announced that he is in control over all Al-Qaeda allied forces in Syria. His group expands into Syria, becoming the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria or ISIS. ISIS grows powerful in Syria in part because Assad tolerates the rise, which he also does because they divide the enemies in Syria and foreign powers are too focused on ISIS rather than worrying about Assad. By June 2014, ISIS has built an army within Syria and it launches a military-style invasion into Iraq. Iraqi army, weakened by corruptions, falls with little fight. 
Many Sunnis are tired of the Shia-dominated and increasingly authoritarian government and welcomes or at least tolerates ISIS's arrival. Between 4th and 10th of June, the Iraqi army fled from Iraq's second largest city, Mosul, and within a few days the city became ISIS's capital city in Iraq. Within days, ISIS controls a third of Iraq and a big part of Syria. ISIS's goal is bigger than anything imagined by Al-Qaeda, to revive the ancient caliphate and encompass all Muslims. Thousands of Muslims, mostly from Middle East and from Europe, flock to join the group. Some join for religious reasons, but many are just disillusioned or angry and feel that ISIS offered them answers and a purpose. ISIS quickly overreaches. That August, it invades the Kurdish territory in Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan and Syrian-occupied Kurdistan, sparking counter-attacks from better-organized Kurdish forces. In Rojava, ISIS attacks Kobani. During this offensive from ISIS, Turkey gets a lot of criticism, mainly for the passivity against ISIS, but also as information leaks out about Turkey behind closed doors supplying ISIS with both logistics and arms. In Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan, the city of Shingal is attacked and Peshmerga forces retreat accordingly after given orders. ISIS launches a genocide against the Yazidi Kurds and at least 4,000 Kurds are killed. In other fronts, they close in on Baghdad and Erbil, and it is now that America starts its air campaign against ISIS. Within time, ISIS can withstand the resistance from ground and air. The battle in Kobani becomes symbolic, since it's a turning point for ISIS success. After losing against YPG in Kobani, the Kurdish group have liberated more than a half of their ground in Syria. As a response of losing ground, ISIS begins to launch terror attacks abroad in countries like Kuwait, Tunisia, Lebanon, Belgium, Germany, and France. So-called lone wolves inspired by ISIS propaganda also launches attacks in the US, Turkey, and Sweden. ISIS also starts to lose ground in Iraq both by Kurdish Peshmerga forces but also Iraqi forces. In 10th of July 2017, Iraqi army backed by the coalition in air and Kurds in the surrounding liberated Mosul from ISIS and a few months later, YPG also liberated the capital of the caliphate called Raqqa. The Islamic State now only had a smaller portion of ground in Syria and Iraq and the YPG have followed up their offensive to now reach the Iraqi border in Syria. However, in the beginning of 2018, YPG is attacked by Turkey from north and the offensive against ISIS is slowed down. We already have a theory about Turkey's attack against Afrin, do not miss those. In the end of August 2018, YPG started an offensive against the last part of ISIS grounds in Syria. You never know what are about to happen, but in this speed, ISIS should have lost all its ground in the end of 2018 or the beginning of 2019. Many experts are agreeing with each other about that ISIS will become an underground movement which in the future will go on to attack West by bombing targets just as Al-Qaeda are. The group also has areas in Afghanistan and Yemen a long way from YPG's presence.